ABC 10 News at 11 starts now. Firefighters are still monitoring several fires tonight after a busy hot day throughout the county. The largest fire in Hamul has burned 100 acres. Good evening. I'm Steve Atkinson and I'm Kimberly Hunt. Our ABC 10 News reporter Laura Acevedo shows us all evacuation orders were lifted this evening. Firefighters stopped the forward spread of the fire but are staying overnight to monitor for hot spots. The Skyline fire erupted just after noon Thursday, burning dangerously close to homes. I looked out the front porch and everything was on fire. Firefighters working with higher than average temperatures, strong winds and rugged terrain trying to slow the spread. You know, hiking up real steep terrain like that, uh, it's real difficult and the fatigue is a real danger to firefighters. Firefighters battling the Skyline fire had air support out of Vermona. Air tanker pilots refueling before heading back out for more water and retardant drops. Well, we've been here 30 years. We know the drill. You, if you're not ready, then look out and uh, we're ready. Near Santee, 15 acres burned near Mast Boulevard and Sycamore Landfill Road. Firefighters making quick progress, now 50% contained. And along the border, the Border 7 fire burning in the Moran Valley. 60 acres burned so far in a remote area between Otay Mesa and Tecate. Cal Fire says no buildings are threatened. Retired fire captain Bob Lyon reminding homeowners to clear things around their home, including patio furniture, lawn equipment, and creating that defensible space, but only once temperatures cool down. So what happens is as the fire comes up, it'll catch those things on fire and plastics uh, burn like gasoline a lot of times. Explaining sometimes firefighters have to make the difficult decision of protecting homes that they have the highest chance of saving. If they choose a house like that, they'll spend a, a lot of effort and a lot of time trying to save that one house. And in the meantime, they might lose three or four others that they might have been able to save. It. Laura Acevedo, ABC 10 News. Camp Pendleton says crews spent the day mopping up three large fires on base. They burn more than 8,000 acres and smoke is still visible in parts of the North County. We're told no structures are threatened on or off the base. Let's check in now with ABC 10 News meteorologist Angelica Campos for a look at the conditions. Angelica, some relief in sight. We need it. Yes, we do. And yes, we have one on the way. It's not going to last too long, but I'll show you the details right now. Not as windy as early this afternoon. The wind's much quieter, much lighter all around the county. And the temperature's dropping about 10 degrees since yesterday in Chula Vista. So some parts of the county are already starting to see a pretty, a pretty decent drop in temperatures. It is down to 55 degrees now in Ramona, 63 Poway, and 64 in the city of Chula Vista. But we do expect the winds out of the west to begin gusting tomorrow afternoon. In areas like Campo, Mount Laguna, winds could range from 20 to as high as 40 and 50 miles per hour. Alpine could see winds between 10 to up to 30 miles an hour. So we, we will be monitoring the winds, but of course, it's good to see those temperatures cooling down. Coming up, I'll show you how long the cool down is going to last. Angelica, thank you. And now to some breaking news. The suspect wanted for a shooting at officers in Paso Robles was killed during a standoff. I know that the community has felt a lot of angst um, and a lot of fear and I'm glad that this is uh, finally over. Authorities spent two days looking for 26 year old Mason James Lira. They believe that he killed a 58 year old man near an Amtrak station and then shot a deputy Nicholas Dreyfus on Wednesday. The San Luis Obispo County Sheriff's Department found Lira hiding in a riverbed this afternoon. During a tent standoff, three officers were shot and taken to nearby hospitals. Lira tried to run but was also shot. He died at the scene. All four officers who were shot are expected to make full recoveries. Along with gyms and hotels, bars will be reopening across San Diego tomorrow. As with restaurants, people will need to have face coverings to get in. They'll be seated six feet from others or they'll have plexiglass dividers between them. Many San Diego bars with food licenses have been open for three weeks and say they're feeling the squeeze of the new restrictions maybe three more weeks and no spike and we get a little more back to the biggest thing for us is going to be 
uh, if people are allowed to be in the venue, maybe a, a lower capacity, um, just not seated. Bar owners say getting people back to work is tough because many employees are making more on unemployment right now, and they're asking anyone who goes out drinking this weekend to be patient with the changes. San Diego Mayor Kevin Faulkner held his final daily coronavirus briefing today. He says they're no longer needed now that major sectors of our economy are reopening tomorrow. This is a big step forward. Um, and the next steps after this depend not on government, they will depend on each of us. This next phase of reopening is all about personal responsibility and accountability to not take unnecessary risks that could put others in harm's way. Um, this is crucial because we do not want to and we will not give up the gains that we have made as a city. Faulkner warns that San Diegans need to stay committed to precautions such as masks and social distancing in order to keep the coronavirus under control. He warned it's still possible for our hospital system to be overwhelmed if people become irresponsible and allow COVID-19 to spread more widely. And now to the latest numbers. The county reported another 161 cases today. That brings the total to 8,900. There were also three more deaths attributed to COVID. That brings that total to 308. San Diego Pride is re-examining its relationship with law enforcement. Organizers say they don't feel it is appropriate for the agencies to be part of the parade in the festival. But ABC 10 News reporter Anthony Pura spoke with one of the founders of the parade who disagrees with that decision and the message it sends. In past years, law enforcement have been part of San Diego's Pride Parade, but their participation in future parades is now up in the air. Pride organizers sent this letter to the mayor calling on the city to promote conversations about diversity, equity, and inclusion. Until then, they don't want law enforcement contingents to be part of the Pride Parade or festival. Pride's executive director, Fernando Lopez, says it's a request from the black LGBTQ community. It can be very traumatizing for folks to see people with guns and tasers and batons march down a parade. Someone who's black can't take off their skin, but a law enforcement officer can remove their uniform and they're still a person, a whole human being. If they want to march with PFLAG or with the Latinx community, if the police chief wants to not wear his uniform and walk next to me next year, happy to have him walk with me next year. This is video of last year's Pride Parade. Police maintained road closures and provided safety. Pride still wants that, but they'd want to be considered a free speech event, meaning they won't be charged. But rather than siphoning money out of the LGBT community, allow us to retain those funds and invest them in our LGBTQ black community. We know, and I know, that things aren't uh, perfect and that we still have problems, but you don't solve those problems by saying no. Nicole Murray Ramirez was one of the co-founders of Pride and now serves on the city's and sheriff's LGBT advisory boards. He disagrees with the decision by Pride organizers. Murray Ramirez knows there are strong calls for police reform and racial justice. Last week, a crowd of 2,000 strong marched through San Diego for that cause. However, he feels the police and LGBTQ community have a strong relationship. That's why he says the officers have been part of the parade and why he believes they should continue to be. It's one of the biggest ovations. And why? Because for the last 50 years, many of us have been working with the police department to improve those relationships. The San Diego Police Department released a statement that says in part, we are disappointed with the decision made by San Diego Pride because further divide is not what we need at this critical time. Anthony Pura, ABC 10 News. Mayor Faulkner encouraged Pride organizers and the police department to continue to strengthen their community ties. I think it's important that our uh, officers who have uh, so proudly supported uh, LGBTQ and Pride, I think it's important that they continue uh, to work together. There's been a rich history, and that's the type of thing that we want, is our officers working with the community, being a part of the community. Uh, and when we do that, we learn from each other, we share from each other, and the more that we can continue to do that in the future, I think serves our city very, very well. And the mayor added in a statement this afternoon, quote, our officers need to be out there continuing to engage 
and learn from the, the uh, diverse communities. They are sworn to serve and protect, including at events such as Pride. There are growing calls to take down Confederate statues and symbols as protests against racial injustice continue. In Virginia, a statue of Confederate President Jefferson Davis that once stood in Richmond was pulled down. Four statues were also removed in Portsmouth. And House Democrats have introduced a bill to send nearly a dozen Confederate statues from the halls of Congress, either back to the states that commissioned them or to the Smithsonian Museum. The American people know these names have to go. These names are white supremacists that uh, said terrible things about our country. And President Trump is responding to calls to change the names of military bases named after Confederate generals, writing on Twitter that his administration won't consider that. But some top military leaders have come out saying they're open to the idea. A disturbing racist rant captured on camera downtown. I don't care. You're a if you act like a That woman was yelling at security guard Rodney Jackson Tuesday night about 3 a.m. outside the pinnacle on the park high rise in the East Village. He says he was trying to help her by calling a cab after she was kicked out of a party inside the high rise. He has no idea why she turned on him. Definitely sucks. Trying to be a, a person that helps someone out and they return such anger at you. Jackson's family posted the video on social media to bring the issue to light. He says he's never seen the woman before the incident. 